DraftKings making a progressive move, I think that most other companies are also going to do or have done in the past. Adding someone from the government or someone you would say in legislation to become their responsible gaming leader here. And in this case, her name is Lori Kalani. And it'll be interesting to see if other companies try to follow suit in terms of hiring former lobbyists to head responsible gaming. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. the 2024 Stanley Cup odds. The Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the, uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will take a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the, the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. So what are your impressions of Valhalla, just for, for folks that have not uh, seen it on TV or didn't watch the Ryder Cups or past majors? You know, they see a, a PGA maybe at a, you know, a Southern Hills moon or a Bet page or, you know, whatever it may be. And they're like, oh, you know, Valhalla and Louisville, Kentucky. But like, look at the tournaments produced and it's insane. Yeah. It really has. And obviously, of course, I'm a bias toward it. Only on Sports Grid. Dry side will get easily at plus money. Get the first goal, the second goal, the fourth goal. Uh, there's a few guys here. You, maybe the prop betting market is not a bad way to look here. Clippers over the map. If I would have told you that score before the game, knowing that Kawhi Leonard wasn't playing, I would have really figured it would have been the other way around. But the NBA is just crazy. In game live, all access only on Sports Grid. This is Sports Ridge. I am Renzi. I'm kicking the camp store now. It's Ian Cameron, a Cape Abano. And, uh, ooh, the Oilers just scored a goal with less than a minute left. And uh, it's the high man. Yeah, it's high man. Yes, thank you, Gabe. I love high man. The high man. <laughs> high man. Zach, yeah, Shaq Hyman. He's good. He better teach Shaq how to skate, man. That'd be a great bit. Oh, I love it, Gabe. Anytime goal I hit with Hyman. Damn. This guy there really is. Going. I don't know why. I'm not betting on this. He scores every game. Gabe, he's got seven goals in his last uh, five games right now. Like, the guy's on fire. <laughs> it really is insane. Mm-hmm. Well, he had a hat trick I... right in the first game, I think. Yeah. But it's been consistent he... after. Plus 130. Like, he's just, like, every, every every game, like, he seems to, he's there, he buries one. He's a great scorer. No, you know what? Oh, he got, once again, he, you know what? He works for it, but he just got really, really lucky. That's what he does. That's what uh, Zach Hyman, man. Like, he's just one of those guys. He's got a knack for it. He was standing. That was the classic Tim Kerr goal. He was just standing in the crease. Oh, I love it. That's my, and yeah, the right puck up, bounced. Right, Look at that. Right <laughs> off the old pants. <laughs> yeah, pants that was in. like a definition yeah. of like, thanks, guys. You guys did everything. Thank you. You know what? Thank you. Well, what does that tell you, Gabe? That's what the Leafs, like, greasy goals. That's the whole thing. Just shoot the puck. Oh, like, it tells me he's in good it's... positioning, too. He's yeah. in the right spot at the right time all the time, right? It's not an accident. Ha- like, it's not a coincidence. It's one of these sports. It's not like rocket science. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's like, ooh, the coach, the coach. There's only, Gabe and I played. Like, there's only so many breakouts you can do. There's only so many systems you can play. It's a very simple game. Like, it's not hard to figure out. Just get in front of the damn net and get in good position. Don't let the goalie see the puck. But everything has to be so I, damn pretty. That today, all they do is cycle it now, Gabe. Okay? It's it's annoying. It's really stupid. I wanted to get to um, – I brought it up earlier. Ryan Garcia tested positive for um, for a banned substance. They're going to overturn this, this fight now. I swear to God, too, it's the most frustrating thing, guys. It happened to me in the UFC one night, too. And it was famous night because I went. There was twelve fights, and I went eleven and one. Julio it was, yeah, and I had I a parlay. Yeah, Cam was there. We were all there and there. stuff. It was a famous night. There were twelve fights. I won eleven of them. The one I lost got overturned an hour after the fight. Yep. Uh, yes. And I was That's like, "You brutal. gotta be kidding me!" I was like, "No, no!" Like they changed the call. But in betting, guys, because a lot of people are asking me, Muncie, I bet on Haney. Do I get my money back? No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. 
It's life. It's a cold Deal world. It. Like in, in, in combat sports, guys, whoever's hand is raised in the cage or in the ring is the winning bet. Doesn't matter if an hour later they say that guy was high on coke and uh, horse steroids. It's like, yeah, well, it's too late. Like, we already she paid people. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's where all decisions are final with the decision in the ring. So, well, that's crazy. But I threw this out there, and I know, Julio, I saw you and I were tweeting about it a bit. But this will blow people's minds. So, a lot of drama in Formula One going on right now. And uh, Mercedes... It's no secret Mercedes have been trying to rock Red Bull's boat enough and and say, listen, to Max Verstappen, why don't you come race for Mercedes? It's hard to give a guy that already has everything something. So we all talked about the Otani deal, the Max Verstappen offer that Mercedes have put together, guys. $159 million dollars. A year. Oh, oh God. I'll take 10% oh. of that. Mercy! That's a lot Level of Level three. This is Sports Rage. I am Ramsey. Kicking it with Cam Stewart and Big Card Hulu. Yeah, I set it up there. You see, Cam? Said, yeah, $159 million. So you figure for what? Four years? Three years? It's like, no. $159. It's a record-setting non-Saudi deal. Yeah, Mercedes have reportedly offered Max Verstappen... Six hundred and thirty-six million dollars for four years, one hundred and fifty-nine million dollars a year. He's going to be a billionaire. Yeah, on, he's only twenty-five. On Ken. <laughs> That's on top of all the marketing. Yeah, yeah, and mar- marketing, 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 sales of cars. Like they're fancy. They have like this Mercedes. Like it's like four hundred k, whatever. Like, like you need to like you need to take lessons before they'll even sell it to you because you'll kill yourself in it. It's like that hybrid of a car type thing. It's for like the elite of the elite. And and Julio win bonuses. And considering he wins all the time. So every time he wins, he would get like another million tacked on type thing. Guys, $160 million a year for a race That's car driver. Good. Some That's incredible. You think F1 tickets are expensive now? <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like at what point is it like it's a little, little crazy here? So- so who uh, makes the, other the most thing money, was, Gabe? Like, who's the highest paid athlete now if, with endorsements, uh, having a percentage of the team and stuff right now? Somebody in soccer? Like, where is it? The is live it, guys. Uh, the live guys, yeah. to be honest. Really? John Rom. Yeah. Yeah, the non-Saudi deal. That's why I said. Like, John Rom, um, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo got, I don't know, a couple of hundred million dollars to play soccer in front of 38 people. <laughs> they, they literally had 300 fans the other day live. <laughs> It's like, what are you guys even doing this? Like, no one's even watching. Like, was, why are you doing this? It was the Saudi this? Cup, too. Yeah, I, I was watching that. I had a bet on it. it was <laughs> yeah, you saw it. Like, <laughs> I was watching it. <laughs> I had a bet. 39 fans. Julio. There were many. Uh, well, I, I, what, I'd what, have what? to ask you, Gabe. I'd have to ask you because Lewis Hamilton, big driver for Mercedes, mm. he's leaving after this season. Is Red Bull going to maybe tighten the screws a little bit with Max as the rest of the season goes on? We've got Miami coming up this weekend. Do you think they'll sort of – you would imagine they still want to win, no. but with their best driver leaving, you know, how, how is that? Well, going to he's not leaving. The the year? He he hasn't left yet, and I don't even think he fully wants to leave. His father wants him to leave because his father's good friends with the woman that Christian Horner uh, harassed. Right? Remember, like the father who is Max's manager said, "Unless there's changes here, I don't see Max staying." And here we are. Like they're not bluffing. And Red Bull, like, are, are thinking, well, whatever, we win because we're not. And the thing is, Red Bull are more of a business. Like, Mercedes are so rich, mm-hmm. and it's prestige for them. They're just tired of not winning. So they're like, whatever, man. Give them $200 million and a bunch of fancy cars and percentage. Who cares? Red Bull are more of a bottom-line business. Red Bull can't afford to pay $160 million a year. Like, they're going to say that's insane. They're paying them fifty right now. Right, they're they're, they're not they're not going to want to triple it, but at the same point in time, maybe they he's going to give them the right to match it. But I get the feeling it's he's really going to leave for real, and uh, next year will wow. just be insane in F one. Lewis Hamilton's going to be in Ferrari, Verstappen will be Mercedes, Carlos Sainz will replace uh, Max at Red Bull. Like it's going to be hot hot stuff next year. All right, so we're coming up against the break, but we got to get Julio's other best bets, and we'll bring Ian Cameron in in a couple of minutes. 
Uh, we got the, um, the the Edmonton Oilers have the L.A. Kings in a lot of trouble uh, right yeah. now. Bad night for L.A. teams is the L.A. Clippers. the big One of the biggest loser organizations in sports history. That's not a, an overstatement. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's no, like, what's, it's the, true. what's the Clippers yeah. high point of their franchise? Yeah. So you have a new you have a new yeah. arena coming. That's your that's your your peak. Kind of a, you're right. Like really, if you break it all down, like it's they're they're been, always been a train wreck. The Kawhi Leonard signing too. If you really want to analyze it, it's been one of the worst, biggest bust deals ever. He's gotten like five hundred million bucks from Balmer, man. What's he giving him? <laughs> <laughs> not much. Like You're right. A lot of, like a lot of did nothing. not plays. A lot of bench. Yeah. A lot of. He, I'm not saying he, he's a bad Kawhi, guy. I'm not Kawhi's all, a great I'm business saying, man. You know I mean? like, he, he played everybody for chumps, man. When he left her, he's The he's Raptors good. dodged a bullet, actually. Everyone was they mad really, at left. They dodged a bullet. I know. Like they kind of did. did. He was broken down. And let's give yep. credit to him. He did break down winning a championship. Like he balled yes. out for the Raptors. He had a bad leg. You could see it. And he, he went out there. And and it ruined him. It was that, that you know. What I mean, that was the end of it. You're right. Like he's an old, like 32 man. That guy. Oh. He's not even that old. Yeah. He looks old too. Yeah. Like he's he's done, knees, you know what man. I mean? Like yeah, he's you know, not like down in basketball. You're done. Yeah. 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 Like Kawhi though. Like he looks like he's like 48 or something. You know what I mean? Not like in his low low 30s. All right. Who your best bets and uh, Babano on the other side? <laughs> DraftKings making a progressive move, I think, that most other companies are also going to do or have done in the past. Adding someone from the government or someone you would say in legislation to become their responsible gaming leader here. And in this case, her name is Lori Kalani. And it'll be interesting to see if other companies try to follow suit in terms of hiring former lobbyists to head responsible gaming. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth. And Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. So where are your impressions of Valhalla, just for, for folks that have not uh, seen it on TV or didn't watch the Ryder Cups or past majors? You know, they see a, a PGA maybe at a, you know, a Southern Hills Boone or a Bet page or, you know, whatever it may be. And they're like, ah, oh, you know, Valhalla and Louisville, Kentucky. But, like, look at the tournaments produced, and it's insane. Yeah, it really has. And obviously, of course, I'm a biased toward it. Only on Sports Grid. Dry side will get easily at plus money. Get the first goal, the second goal, the fourth goal. Uh, there's a few guys here. You, maybe the prop betting market is not a bad way to look here. Clippers over the map. If I would have told you that score before the game, knowing that Kawhi Leonard wasn't playing, I would have really figured it would have been the other way around. But I mean, the NBA is just crazy. In game live, all access only on Sports Grid. All right, this is Sports Ray, Jai Morenci. So the Clippers are getting pasted. Uh, the LA Kings are in trouble right now. They're down uh, by two goals. Want to, I just want to check in here. At 101.72, like I said, what a weird series this has been. In-game total is 197.5. Clippers are now getting 25.5 points with six minutes left. But I wanted to look at this. Man, they're, they're on to it. So this is sort of the spot, guys, from a betting perspective in the elimination game, Okay. When a team is down now, like the LA Kings are screwed. Like their season's on the line, point blank. Like they they lose this game, their season's over. They're down by two goals. 
They have no choice. They can't play their style of trying to keep Edmonton from scoring. They're going to need to open things up. They don't have a choice. And they're also going to pull their goalie cam down two goals. Yep. Like, they'll keep the goalie out down three goals. Right? Like, so, I wish Julio was seven and a half, bro, but they're not stupid. They made it eight and a half right now, plus 110. What do you think, Julio? You want to go? Do we get to nine? I think we do. I think the Kings probably score one, and the Oilers probably score one or two here, like two more. I'm I'm going over the eight and a half here, guys. I'm playing my strategy. There's going to be crazy Julio, goals at the end of this game. Let's remember one thing too. Before Julio, you you talked. Remember Florida, what they did? Uh, Tampa Bay when they were down, they pulled the goalie with five. They scored. They put the goalie back in, and then took him out again. Like you don't know what a coach does. They yeah. do crazy. Cooper was crazy, and then they scored another goal to, for to go over the number, Gabe. So I don't know what you're thinking. I would say over. Yeah. Yeah, no, they don't have a choice. They have to open. Let me just see what seven and a half is. Ah, two forty. Yeah, I got to go eight and a half yeah. plus one ten. I'm actually surprised. I thought it'd be like three hundred and change, like because you know they're good. They have to. They're down. You have to. You have to imagine the third period total is probably a one and a, a two and a half going into uh, going, uh, right now in the intermission. Yeah, I mean, it's it the same. Sense. It's the exact same. Two and a half yeah. plus one ten. It's the same same number. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm take you guys. I, I take the over. and I mean, I've got the Oilers right now in regulation. I, I took that advice last night yeah. with Colorado. I took Colorado in regulation, Colorado minus one and a half. This, uh, I'm in agreement with you guys. In these elimination games, it, it's probably, it's best to take the puck line if you're able to. I wish you I and your Colorado out. hype. And I would have so much damn money. Colorado. Yeah, only game wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Julio, we got to get you out of here. What else do you got? What do you What do you want to share with Summer oh, Reality? Uh, we'll, we'll go. We'll go on the soccer pitch quickly. Bayern Munich, they're plus two ten. When's the last time Bayern Munich have been plus two ten in the German Bundesliga? They take on Stuttgart. Give me Bayern Munich plus two ten. Olympiacos tomorrow in the uh, U, uh, UEFA Europa. Conference League or Europa League, whichever they're in. I'm taking Olympiacos plus two goals minus one fifty. Borussia Dortmund. Seven to one plus seven hundred to win Ooh. the Champions League. I'm doing two folds here. I'm doing Dortmund a seven to one, and then PSG at plus two seventy five. And the reason I'm doing that is PSG are minus one fifty to qualify against Dortmund in the second leg. I might as well just take them at plus two seventy five. With the thought being, if they make the final, we would not get that price. Maybe one fifty, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, in uh, Spain. We'll do Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad, Real Sociedad clean, <laughs> clean sheet against Las Palmas. Las Palmas are about to be relegated. Uh, they're just going to take it easy in, in this match. Oh. Club Rouge, Club Rouge on the money line, plus 350 tomorrow against Florentina. Atletico de Madrid on the money line, plus 110. And uh, I've got a UFC parlay. It's already tied in with the Oilers, but I like uh, Pereira and uh, Vitor uh, Pedrino on the money line tomorrow and a tennis parlay. Yeah. They're Russians, but we consider them world athletes, you know, because of uh, the geopolitical issues. So give me Andre Rublev and Daniel Medvedev money line parlay. Uh, it, it's got uh, Jerry on there, but it's vice versa. I like Rublev and I like uh, Medvedev money line parlay for both tomorrow in Madrid. Nothing on the baseball diamond for me. Uh, baseball's been weird for me this season. I, I've been betting the A's on the unders a lot, but tomorrow's card looks like crap. It sounds like you have enough action as it is without the baseball. Seriously, yeah, yeah. I, I like Celta Vigo myself, Gabe. Uh, but anyway, holy Jesus, guy. Not, not to mention the the lacrosse that you gave us earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I like the under in Nashville tomorrow. I, I've been loving this series. Uh, with uh, Nashville and Vancouver, like the under five and a half in that one. And then same game parlay, plus 120. Bruins, plus one and a half on the on the puck line, under six and a half goals. I think it'll be a nice KG matchup tomorrow in Toronto. Hope so. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to put together one of my uh, plus two and a half plays here across the board again. Plus two and a half goals. The, the plus one and a half is no good. It's a waste of time because you can get burnt with the empty netter. Dude, last night I took the Winnipeg Jet plus three and a half in a parlay. I had it back then just to be, like, safe. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to get screwed over. At least I'll win something with the plus goals here. 
So let me just add it up and see what we can come up with. Actually, let me ask you, Julio, because you were giving us all the uh, – we focused on the hockey and, surprisingly enough, the lacrosse. Julio, if you weren't with us earlier, Julio likes the Denver Pioneers coming off their NCAA Ice Hockey Championship to win the uh, Men's Lacrosse Championship at 25-1. to 1. Both me and Cam threw out the Maryland Terrapins at plus 1,400 as a gut feel pick. But Denver Nuggets and the Minnesota Timberwolves, they played last year. It was a competitive series, went five games. But the T-Wolves were still kind of figuring it out. They're a much better team this year, Julio. Mm -hmm. What's your take on this one here? Who do you got, Nuggets and T-Wolves? I think it's going to be the Nuggets in seven. I think it's going to be a really tight series, really, really fun series to watch. If you remember last year, Anthony Edwards was furious in Denver when they got eliminated, kicked chairs in the front row, and he hit a fan. They were irate. They thought they could win that series. Over the course of the regular season, there were some fun, tight matchups. I think the T-Wolves give the Nuggets a run for their money. I mean, Denver were, I'm not going to say lucky, but fortunate <laughs> to beat the Lakers in five because there, there could have been that, that series could have been six or seven if the Lakers got a couple of bounces their way. So uh, it's going to be a fun series. Give me Denver in seven. Yeah, and Minnesota are better than the Lakers are. And, and yeah. I like, and I don't think the Lakers are bad. I never piled on. I've defended the Lakers a lot recently in the sense that if they weren't playing Denver, they could have won a series. Yeah. But like Magic Johnson tweeted, said, you know, you put yourself in this position by finishing where you did. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. You know, the Lakers didn't take enough regular season games seriously earlier in the year. DraftKings making a progressive move, I think, that most other companies are also going to do or have done in the past. Adding someone from the government or someone you would say in legislation to become their responsible gaming leader here. And in this case, her name is Lori Kalani. And it'll be interesting to see if other companies try to follow suit in terms of hiring former lobbyists to head responsible gaming. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. To the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the, uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top-end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will take a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately I think the, the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. So where are your impressions of Valhalla, just for, for folks that have not uh, seen it on TV or didn't watch the Ryder Cups or past majors? You know, they see a, a PGA maybe at a, you know, a Southern Hills booth or a bet page or, you know, whatever it may be. And they're like, ah, oh, you know, Valhalla and Louisville, Kentucky. But like, look at the tournaments produced and it's insane. Yeah, it really has. And obviously, of course, I'm a bias toward it. Only on Sports Grid. Dreisaitl could easily, at plus money, get the first goal, the second goal, the fourth goal. Uh, there's a few guys here. You, maybe the prop betting market is not a bad way to look here. Clippers over the map. If I would have told you that score before the game, knowing that Kawhi Leonard wasn't playing, I would have really figured it would have been the other way around. But it, the NBA is just crazy. In-game live, all access, only on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Marenzi. Kicking it, uh, Cam Stewart in the house. We still got to get all of Cam's uh, golf picks uh, as well. We had uh, Brady Cannon on with us earlier. So just to get you caught up to date, the third period has just started in Edmonton. It's 4-2 for the Edmonton Oilers. We pulled the trigger on the over 8.5 at uh, plus 110, and it's already plus 135 right now. So I probably should have waited, but should have, could have, would have. Um, one, it is 8 nothing for the Dodgers over the D-backs. Dodgers uh, on a real roll over the last uh, week and a half. 123 to 93 
uh, right now. Wait, 123 to 93. Hold on. We actually, we got there yep. for the 211. We gave up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I looked away, Cam. I'm like, you I looked away, like you said. You are like, that's why you're talking about hockey so much. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to no, look we're thinking about, get mad. We're thinking about what hotel in Buffalo's got two skating rinks instead of a pool. Yeah, yeah exactly. The Marriott. Yeah, nice winner. Yeah, the Marriott. This is the answer. <laughs> yeah, and you know when you're so, you expect to lose, I'm doing the math. It's sort of like, I you, love you, like you said, Cam. Like a blackjack yep. player from Wisconsin in Vegas. Seven, yep. seven, <laughs> 14. Six. Like, I'm sort of Half doing the math. Old. I'm like, 123, <laughs> 93. I'm like, like, isn't that 216? I'm like, wait, I think it's yeah, over, isn't it? Take a card. Yeah, we take had two, a card. 211 and a half. We had 211 and a half. <laughs> Good. What inning is that Dodger game in? I got under nine and a half. I still have a chance in that game, too. Is it in the ninth? It's eight nothing. Yeah, it's eight nothing. It's uh, currently in the uh, bottom. Yeah, actually, you know what? It's about ten. It's the bottom of the ninth inning right now. And there's one out. Oh, oh, please just give me. One but run, the D-backs have a runner on first, so as long as they don't hit a two-run home run here, <laughs> let's yeah. let's break. Man, that, was, that sucked last night. I lost that bet when we were live on the air. Remember, Dave Delano did live too. It's like oh, Ryan yeah. Houston just hit a walk-off home run. It was like, yeah, that sucked. Um. All right, Ian Cameron, a.k.a. Babano in the house with us. What's going on, Babano? How you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm just amazed that these dumb NHL teams realize when you're playing Colorado and Winnipeg, or Colorado and Edmonton here in the first round, yeah, let's take penalties. Let's take endless amounts of penalties. That's our surefire way to win the series. Well, it's good for us. Yeah, teams can't help Edmonton. themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's crazy. L.A., we're right in it, and then the wheels just fell off. huh? Like, boom, boom, a couple of, like you said, you take penalties, Edmonton are going to bury you. But we all know special teams are so critical and paramount uh, in the postseason. So 4-2 in this game right now. And the basketball game, we actually got there as far as the total was concerned, which I'm actually happy about. I wasn't expecting it. It was a surprise, a, uh, a surprise win at over 211. But the Mavericks showed up in a big-time way tonight and uh, rolled the L.A. Clippers. So let's just move forward here. There's a lot of games uh, to get to, as long as we're on the hardwood here, Babano. Uh, what do you think? Big game uh, tomorrow night. And a little late start, actually, for Philly. It's going to be pretty crazy. And, man, the people in Philly are going to have a lot of time to drink tomorrow, Cam. They're not starting until 9, which yeah. means like 9.20 yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, get off of work at 5. Gonna, These guys are <laughs> oh, yeah. tuned. That's not good. Dude, like, the, the crowd in Philly tomorrow is going to be wasted. <laughs> like, yep. 9 o'clock at night. And I tell you what, they're not going to be very happy leaving that arena. You're going to have a lot of angry Philadelphians leaving an arena, man, at about midnight tomorrow night, late at night, if they lose this game to New York. What do you think, Babano? The series is really heating up right now. The uh, the Sixers are three-point favorites tomorrow. The total is 199. What do you think about this game? So Philly won and covered, but they were dogs, and it was an improbable win. I mean, how the Knicks did not end that series is hard to believe. Uh, they're up six with 28 seconds left, and you can't bring it home. Goes to overtime, and they needed Tyrese Maxey to have a performance of a lifetime. 46 points. He was spectacular. Give him credit. You know, he's really stepped up. He's become like the 1B after Embiid on this basketball team. But let's see him do it again. That was a huge performance. The Knicks know they should have probably ended that series. I still don't feel comfortable laying points with Philadelphia. I don't think Embiid's fully right. Uh, you know, Maxi needed to just go off and go nuts for them to even have a chance to come back, force overtime, and win that game. The Knicks have already shown they can go to Philadelphia and win like they did in game four. I'd be taking the points here with the Knicks to close it out. Taking the Knicks. It's three Ooh. points. All compelling arguments that you make, but you, you could also make an argument that the Knicks shouldn't have won one of the games earlier in the series as well. Right, it, so it, it it evened out at Madison Square Garden there, and Philly losing the way they did at home with the Knicks fans taking a building over and everything, I just don't see it happening tomorrow night. But like Paul Bowlby said earlier, everyone has its price. <laughs> we'll see. So we'll yeah. see if Sixer fans sell sell their tickets or not, like they did on Sunday. Speaking of which, Bowlby's mad. He sent me a message. He goes, "Man, I had a bunch of plays. Evan Marriott."
DraftKings making a progressive move, I think that most other companies are also going to do or have done in the past. Adding someone from the government or someone you would say in legislation to become their responsible gaming leader here. And in this case, her name is Lori Kalani. And it'll be interesting to see if other companies try to follow suit in terms of hiring former lobbyists to head responsible gaming. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I would say a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately I think the, the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. So where are your impressions of Valhalla just for, for folks that have not uh, seen it on TV or didn't watch the Ryder Cups or past majors? You know, they see a, a PGA maybe at a, you know, a Southern Hills booth or a bet page or, you know, whatever it may be. And they're like, oh, you know, Valhalla and Louisville, Kentucky. But like, look at the tournaments produced and it's insane. Yeah, it really has. And obviously, of course, I'm a bias toward it. Only on Sports Grid. Dreisaitl could easily, at plus money, get the first goal, the second goal, the fourth goal. Uh, there's a few guys here. You, maybe the prop betting market is not a bad way to look here. Clippers over the map. If I would have told you that score before the game, knowing that Clyde Leonard wasn't playing, I would have really figured it would have been the other way around. But the NBA is just crazy. In-game live, all access, only on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Rancy. We're throwing it down here. 4 2, 12 minutes left. I need some goals, baby. Let's get this going uh, right now. Ideally, if Edmonton would score, it'd be better. Uh, or LA would score. Edmonton, I was, mm. was going to say it was the slip of the tongue because Edmonton nearly just scored, actually. They had a two on one, but they didn't bury it. But I need it would be better if LA could score, make it 4 3, and then it would really sort of open up. They'd pull the goalie. They're still going to pull the goalie with probably five minutes left or something like that if they're down by two goals. So I still think we can get to nine. Although I got to tell you, it probably pays pretty good now. Um, yeah. What does it pay now? Yeah, seven and a half is good enough now. Plus 105, yeah. plus 110. It's seven oh, yeah. and a half. Yeah, seven and half, yeah. They're going to pull the goalie yeah. to bat on. They're down yeah, two. They don't have a choice. Of course. I'm yep. there now. I'm already on it. I can't, I, I can't resist. Uh, I bet the eight and a half, not going to bet a seven and a half. Uh, Steve Rex, you, <laughs> yeah, you were so, we never wait. Eh? We're like those guys. Like, come on, come on, come on. Take more. more. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Son of a You're like. taking the Clipper monies and you put it into the Euler monies. That's the, that's the way it's we still roll plus here. money, though. Plus 115, yeah. I'm getting right now. I, Over seven and a half. Needs two goals. Yep. I'm in. Yeah, and dad, like we said, if LA could get one, Abe Mano would really help. Like then, then we That's got right. it for sure. That boom, four no, three. The only be, question boom, is five, if Edmonton three. makes it five two late in the game, does Jim Hiller does pull LA the goalie again down? No, three? they, they, they yeah. know what? That's the thing. They tap at three. Like he might not pull a Cooper. He might just say, they you know what, up, they, we're done. I say they pull a goalie at three. Still. Oh, no, no, you're right. But, 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 if, <laughs> but if they go up four. That's the yeah no Cooper no, crazy four. that night yeah four's the surrender flag you're right okay that's fair I once lost I once lost like a big total bet in the World Junior Championships because the one of the coaches from some stupid team it was like tiebreaker stuff so he kept pulling the goalie like even though they were losing by seven and eight and the other team kept scoring it was like breaking my heart like I had the <laughs> under I was like dear <laughs> God like no right it was like one after another and there was like five empty net goals. I could. It was. I never seen anything like it. So um, hopefully we get some goals. They just hit the uh, the ten minute mark right now. So let me ask you, Babanda. We've been having a debate tonight. If you were the Vancouver Canucks against the Nashville Predators on Friday night, and Casey DeSmith is healthy and able to play, do you go with uh, Seelofs or do you go with Casey DeSmith? Because we've all given our we've we've given our opinions. Who would you start if you were Rick Tockett? He won there in Nashville already. I think he's got a long-term greater upside and higher ceiling. 
than Casey to Smith. I'd run back Archer Shelov's ear. I really would. Uh, I'd put my faith in the young Latvian one more time. Cam, good. your final final decision? I'm with I'm with Babano on that one. I think this kid's all right. And I, as I said before, that second shot from Nashville was a perfect point point shot from the point. He had no no, no goalie in the league. Like it was it was a perfect shot. It. The guy Didn't the guy played it. great. He played great. Uh, I'm with I'm with Babano on this one. I think the kid deserves a chance again, Gabe. I like him. I I thought he should have started the the games that he has, but I would go back to DeSmith. I I personally, if he's able to play, I would go back to DeSmith. And make leash. the decision if it goes if it goes seven after, but the Smith played awesome in the last game that he played, and he, he has did. more experience. Like just because Seelofs has played well, don't you don't want to put too much on the kid's plate? He's only twenty three years old, so you know he's played four games this year in the NHL. So like you don't want to say all right, let's just, we're putting all. And I get it, Babano, and I'm a big fan of his. If you, anyone knows, like I, I I I hyped up the kid right away. I was like, don't worry about it. He's going to be fine. And I would play him again after. Demko's not going to be back for another two weeks or something still. So there's yeah. going to be plenty of opportunities for both guys to play. I just like the veteran. I like the veteranness that that Casey could bring to the table in this game. So we made our, our decision. But now we'll ask you, Cam, what do you think they, they will do? We said what we think we will do what we would do, but we're not, we're not the Vancouver Canuck organization. They're the ones going to make the decision. I say I, they're going to go with Casey to Smith. I think they're going to start the kid. I bet on it too. I, 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 I really do Gabe. I, I, I think he's going to, I think he's going to play. I think the team's caught. You no, know it's a very difficult decision because of DeSmith playing well. That's the problem. It's just, it's and this, and this kid has, as Babano said, tremendous upside. He was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. The thing is, about a game, both of those goals, too. The first one, he got mowed into the net, and the second one was an unsavable puck. The guy played great. Like, he's done There's well. There's positives and negatives. You could say, well, Casey DeSmith also mm-hmm. won last week. He played great in Nashville, mm-hmm. and he has more experience. And we could always go back to the kid after in Game 7 if we want. Or I'm sure these people in the room could say, listen, Casey hasn't played in, like, six days. Right mm-hmm. now we're gonna throw him out here. He's, you know, what I mean, Lee Arthur's has been playing and he's in a groove now. It's a decision, but my gut tells me, and I've been pretty good at predicting what talk it's gonna do. I'm, I'm my prediction is it's Casey to Smith. We'll see uh, how it plays out. So we'll get back to the basketball, but as long as we're on the, the ice right now, yeah. uh, Babano, Boston Bruins, Toronto Maple Leafs. The legendary Dave Hodge had a great tweet uh, before the game yesterday in which he said, never mind if the Leafs can win in Boston tonight. If they do, can they win in Toronto? They've lost six straight home playoff games. So now they go back to the well one more time. You got to feel at one point, like, you know, it's like the broken clock is right twice a day. At some point, they need to win a home game, right? Give me the Leafs tomorrow. We know Cam's on the Leafs. What's your pick tomorrow, Babano? Leafs or Bees? Ah, oh, geez, this home playoff record, man. And that, just the way that building gets. That, the way that building gets, and they tent up. It's a death trap. I know. It sucks. It's a wine and cheese crowd. And but plus, you have hey, to lay a price hey, to hey. Toronto. They've lost six uh, playoff home games in a row. Look, I don't know if I love this game from a betting stand. It's a, fun, it's a great game to watch. It's so fascinating. You got a team that can't, you know. Th- teases their fan base year after year Toronto against a team that did choke away a 3-1 series lead last year the Boston Bruins and maybe there is a seed of doubt planted but uh, you know I'm probably passing the side but we're not here to say pass we're here to give an opinion so I'll give an opinion if I'm playing I'm taking Boston here at the plus price it's it's a fair bet but Gabe's right they the whole problem with the building Babano I know they have some wine and cheese customers but Gabe brought it up before and I've been saying this for 20 damn years it's the music you can't play Justin Bieber. You can't play the good old hockey game. You got to make it into like yeah, it's the atmosphere. Like I want to talk. You don't like the power play song when they go to the power play. They go to play Black Eyed Peas. I got the power. I got the power. Yeah, I go to the game. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's the thing. I go to that. That's why we snapped on the Hall and Oates goal song. Like they've been doing this for years. Enough. You got to turn it into like a place of mayhem. WrestleMania. Fun. Yes. 
Thank you. Um, You're right, Gabe. We don't have to fire their, people. Breed by Nirvana, relocation. like they did in Dallas tonight. They They're played just, Breed just by Nirvana. I couldn't believe oh, it. I Dallas is always – Matt Renzi knows. They've been playing Pantera, Slayer, and stuff for years, that team. Yeah. They they get it. That DJ gets it. All those – all oh, those southern teams, you'll notice Vegas too. They play a lot of events, yeah. sevenfold, five five finger yeah. death punch, local Vegas band. But they, they go pretty heavy too. Um yeah. so yeah, the Canucks playing the Predators. The Predators like the Leafs, so the Predators have lost five straight home games themselves. Mm. So they have a hard yeah. time winning. And we've seen now both teams have won on the road a couple of times already in this series. So um that, you know, Vancouver are capable of winning. Dallas and Vegas, Babano, does Dallas finish Vegas off on Friday night on the Strip? Or does Vegas send this to seven? Well, I sure hope Dallas finishes it off. I have Dallas to win the series. I took Dallas a little bit when they were down uh, two, uh, one uh, in the uh, series as well uh, to Vegas, thinking, you know what, they're starting to come alive. They're starting to play better, take it to Vegas. They all played Vegas in Vegas. And tonight, I thought they were the better team as well and got the win. I think Dallas will advance. I like what they're doing. Jake Ottinger, by the way, has not given up a goal in the third period in this series. He's, He's starting to play better. He, that breakaway yeah. he, he made, that save game, oh, my God, that was crazy. That's the game right there. And Bobano, smartest thing I ever done. That. Taking yeah. Vegas when when they were up two nothing, I took Dallas because you got a crazy price. The Dallas Stars are a great hockey team, man. I watched them play. The money and, period, and semi good. Yep. They're good. They win the it all. Money period in the Stanley Cup playoffs, the third period, and Jake Ottinger in this series in the third period hasn't given up the goal. Hard to bet against that. I think this game's going to go to overtime. Gut feel. It might, Gabe. Good call. DraftKings making a progressive move, I think, that most other companies are also going to do or have done in the past. Adding someone from the government or someone you would say in legislation to become their responsible gaming leader here. And in this case, her name is Lori Kalani. And it'll be interesting to see if other companies try to follow suit in terms of hiring former lobbyists to head responsible gaming. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. the 2024 Stanley Cup odds, the Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will take a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the, the Stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. So what are your impressions of Valhalla just for, for folks that have not uh, seen it on TV or didn't watch the Ryder Cups or past majors? You know, they see a, a PGA maybe at a, you know, a Southern Hills Loon or a Bet page or, you know, whatever it may be. And they're like, oh, you know, Valhalla and Louisville, Kentucky. But like, look at the tournaments produced and it's insane. Yeah, it really has. And obviously, of course, I'm a biased toward it. Only on Sports Grid. Dry side could easily at plus money get the first goal, the second goal, the fourth goal. Uh, there's a few guys here. You, maybe the prop betting market is not a bad way to look here. Clippers over the map. If I would have told you that score before the game, knowing that Kawhi Leonard wasn't playing, I would have really figured it would have been the other way around. But the, the NBA is just crazy. In game live, all access only on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage, the Wicked Wednesday. And we need some goals, man. Come on. The LA Kings really have not created anything. Edmonton just sort of keep flicking the puck down the ice and buying time. And LA really aren't doing much. We'll see when they pull the goalie. They've got to do it pretty soon, to be honest, considering yeah. they're running out of racetrack right now. I mean, they got to do it like four or five minutes type thing, I would say. We're at 528 right now. I, don't think, I think they have like one shot on goal in this period. Very, very inept period of play. 
by the LA Kings. I mean, this is not the way you want to go down. If you're going to go down, at least go down swinging. So, all right, we're going to pick up the pace here. We'll get Cam's golf pick. So, so Babano, the um, Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers. This seems to be depending on where you are. George Kurtz was with us earlier. He's in Long Island, and the Rangers were favored there. But checking a lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. Somewhat surprising considering the Rangers' season and how good they are at MSG. I'm going to take the Rangers in game one here as an underdog. What do you think of the series? Who do you like? This is a really tough one. This is a great series. What I, I, I probably lean, I probably lean Rangers. I like the six and seven games prop, like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. And again, if you take series to go six, series to go seven, if one of them hits, you're profitable. I'm going to lean. I'm going to go Rangers too. And it's. I just like that they've got four lines that have all made an impact. I think their blue line is better. I think their blue line is tougher now. And it's tough because I think Carolina is a lot better than they were last year, too, with the addition of Jake Gensel, you know, and uh, Kuznetsov even has had a good playoff, who so they got at the deadline. And their D1 through six is as good as any. But at the end of the day, I see Freddie Anderson have another Freddie Anderson playoff moment last night against the Islanders. I know they won the game, but that one goal he gave up was horrible. He's lost the net, and Sezikis has a wide-open net. I'm worried we have those moments again from Freddie Anderson, who's going to have to be strong, who's they're going up against a much better team. And then on the other end, you've got Igor Shosturkin, who's been awesome, really, since the All-Star break. He's been flat-out spectacular, and I think that could be the difference, you know, in a very, very tight, close series. So Rangers in a classic is what I'm going to say. I'm looking at the series price right now. Are Carolina Hurricanes. Like I know. They nearly like, scored, but you're right. Like, like, what are you doing? Like, like, he's, he's an idiot. He's nuts. Like, I don't know why on. he didn't pull the goalie like a minute and a half ago. They had so much pressure in front of the net. It was the time now. You bring another attacker in now. Like, now, I don't know why yeah, they're not now people. still. This is like, absolutely he's old school, too. Yeah. Like, you got to do it even in the old days. He's four minutes line, and their goal. Yeah. And they're doing? creating pressure. The puck has been in Edmonton zone the whole time. That's the whole reason why, too. It's like, guys, this is like, the time is not. No, this is ridiculous. Dude, wow. you see teams not... down one goal, pull the goalie now with two and a half left. They're like, oh. pull the goalie, pull the goalie. <laughs> finally. They finally pull the goalie now, 238 yeah. left. Two, you're down by two goals, dumbass. Too late. Too late. Dude, and we're old. Good example is the Canucks. <laughs> the Canucks the other day, when they were down by two, remember? They did it with 330. Oh, Gold Kings. Talking did they it with 330. The Kings score. It's 4-3. Let's see. Here it is. Oh, All right. God. There's one. This is not – now I'm scared because right. I got Edmonton minus great one Great job. Great too. timing pulling the goalie. <laughs> he knew exactly when to do it. I'm going to tell you that was so crap. No, it's that's shitty time. That's, 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 that's a, timing, that's a bad just, move, you know, man. Yeah. These guys are so lucky. It was a horror. Like, you said it, Moretzi. When you're in the end and peppering Skinner, like, you pull him, yeah, yeah, they got yeah, lucky yeah, 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 yeah. there. I don't care. I don't care if this is working out. Like, it's still a dumb still decision. No, no. But Edmonton waited. were overwhelmed, like, as it was. Yeah. So that's when you bring in another guy just to blast it. Like, all right, now we got another attacker out here. Now this here. game's not over. Oh, jeez. Okay, but now now our seven and a half is in play, guys, at that plus money. Yep. Yeah. Can we yes. get, like, two more? Like, I got a feeling they're crazy. I got a feeling crazy <laughs> things will happen here. <laughs> Gary Green, this is yeah, why you yeah. never give up on these five overs in the third period of an elimination game because no, it could explode in the last few minutes. I don't want to nine. screw your guys' regulation bet over here or anything, but uh, LA score again, 4-4. Four, four, <laughs> we hit it, 8.5. It was over. <laughs> Settle down, Renzi. 5-3, three, 6-3. Three. Maybe this guy will keep him up. I don't know what this coach is doing. He, if Edmonton scores, he might even tap out down two goals. He, All right, he's got possession in the zone. There. You got to pull he the goalie again. Pull him now. Pull him now. take him out again. I know, oh, I know. What's he doing? What's Dude, doing? why do you leave him in there? This guy's crazy. Like, even like, he's old school, it. old school, this oh, guy. He's no. old school. He's like, yeah. I don't want to do it. Like, <laughs> like the old guy gave, pull him a 30 seconds left in the game. It's like, whoa, this is, yeah, yeah, that, this is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, How do they not pull him still now? They have uh, possession here. There's a buck 40. Under two minutes. Like, yeah, the season's you, you on the line. You gotta do it now. You do it now. I think it can't be any later. Edmonton's got a two on one. Okay, well, and they screwed it up. Yeah. He's still, he's still in. The moment they he won is. the face off and got yeah. the puck down oh. deep, he should have oh, taken a horrible out. play. You shoot the puck. These guys know, are too much. Like, what? That's a okay, horrible two-on-one. Okay, now you better one. pull him. 
All right, now the net yeah, is empty. A buck <laughs> twenty left. They didn't leave himself enough time, man. They should have done it like forty seconds ago. Uh, don't we got a video? We got a play, or do we got time, or what's the deal? Uh, what do we uh, do? Do your golf picks now. I'll keep oh, my okay, eye. Okay, go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn it! Now I can't watch the game. Got to focus. Okay, guys. CJ Cup in Texas. <laughs> Frank fought. Give it to me. Oh, no. We'll start it now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to start with the CJ Cup Byron Nelson, Gabe. We're going to go. Have you looked at my leaderboard? I don't have an American player. That's crazy. First time this year. Swedish Hammer, Alex Norin, 28 to 1. Brady Cannon likes him too. Tom Kim, very dangerous in this type of course. He's coming along. I think this is a great price. And a, Gabe talked about it. Jordan Spieth's a favorite at 16. You're giving me Tom Kim at 35. He's been bet down to 25 in a lot of sites, but I'll, I got him at 35. This one's for you, Babano, from Babano's hometown, Dundas, Ontario, outside of Hamilton. Mackenzie Hughes, 48 to 1, the Canuck. KH Lee's won the tournament two out of three years, 50 to 1, and two guys at 110. Give me the smart lefty, Garrett Higgle from South Africa, and CT Pots and Pans at 110 to 1. We're blowing up the top board. Guys, let's go. We got top tens, and I got choices. C, Wu, Kim, plus 160 for a top 10. Min, Wu, Lee, plus 280 for a top 10. Top 20, Gabe, what do we like to do in Vegas? We like to have a couple drinks. Why not have a Jager bomb when we hit the Vegas tables? Plus 150 for Steven Jager. He's already won this year for a top 20. Two hoagie sandwiches, please, plus 185. And what's in the cupboard with Mark Hubbard? Who knows? But at plus 260, he's red hot. And Max Greaserman, who is he? I can tell you one thing. He went to Duke, and he's finished top 40 in five of his last six. He goes. We just got screwed so hard. I didn't even know what happened. Yep. DraftKings making a progressive move, I think, that most other companies are also going to do or have done in the past. Adding someone from the government or someone you would say in legislation to become their responsible gaming leader here. And in this case, her name is Lori Kalani. And it'll be interesting to see if other companies try to follow suit in terms of hiring former lobbyists to head responsible gaming. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. the 2024 Stanley Cup odds. The Hurricanes remain the favorite, followed by the Panthers and the Rangers. Interesting that they all are coming from the uh, the similar side of the bracket. While the Oilers have the top end talent, I still don't think they have enough depth, and Stuart Skinner does not scare me in depth. So I will see a long series from the Oilers and the Kings, and ultimately, I think the, the stars are the ones coming out of the West uh, for the Stanley Cup. The early line, only on Sports Grid. So what are your impressions of Valhalla, just for, for folks that have not uh, seen it on TV or didn't watch the Ryder Cups or past majors? You know, they see a, a PGA maybe at a, you know, a Southern Hills moon or a Bet page or, you know, whatever it may be. And they're like, oh, you know, Valhalla and Louisville, Kentucky. But, like, look at the tournaments produced, and it's insane. Yeah. It really has. And obviously, of course, I'm a biased toward it. Only on Sports Grid. Dry side look could easily at plus money get the first goal, the second goal, the fourth goal. Uh, there's a few guys here. You, maybe the prop betting market is not a bad way to look here. Clippers over the map. If I would have told you that score before the game, knowing that Kawhi Leonard wasn't playing, I would have really figured it would have been the other way around. But I mean, the NBA is just crazy. In game live, all access only on Sports Grid. The Edmonton Oilers and the LA Kings are doing the traditional handshake. The Oilers won the game. We didn't get the empty netter after because of a... It's like basketball. It's like a clear path foul. Mm-hmm. Leon Dreisaitl had the puck. He was blazing in. The net was empty. He got tripped and taken down. And they didn't call it like a penalty shot. 
it wasn't like a full it was like a nearly clear pass but it wasn't so it was the right call it was just a penalty we get screwed over and uh babano yep. what'd you say good bet bad result <laughs> yeah know what i said who cares i want yeah. bad bets good bad, results. Re- bad 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 <laughs> result. that's what it was a lucky yeah. winner i won winner that you i had, want i want uh, crappy uh, bets with good results not yeah, good bets you. with Damn. bad results hey that's Gabe, i got some uh, i got a couple sucked. quick quick picks for you yeah, hold on let, let, oh yeah sorry we're going to singapore or no yeah so uh yeah with craig mish Craig Mish covers, uh, does a great job covering baseball uh, on Sports Grid and the Miami Herald, but he's so beaten down talking about the Marlins. Now he's got to talk about Mike Trout instead. <laughs> That's true. What would you think here, Craig? Might be suitors for Mike Trout. And also, what's the price of Mike Trout? Because so many times we take a look at, like, Mike Trout's not at the end of a, uh, let's just say, a three year contract where he has another year and a half where you can keep him under control. This is a monster contract for an aging player that's been injured. Still could be a superstar, yeah. but is there a market for that, Craig? I mean, look, the the easiest one to go to here, Donnie, and I know you'll love hearing this, is Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. You know, this is where he's from. Mm. This is the, He's mm. still a fan of the teams there. He shows up to watch the Eagles games. And it would make the most sense. You also have a president of baseball operations in Dave Dombrowski, who's never afraid to spend that money, right? Like, he did it with the Tigers. He did it with the Red Sox. He's doing it with the Phillies now. But that's a lot to ask for a team to take that on until 2030, $30 million a season. Yeah. So I guess I wonder if if the Phillies were able to send a prospect back or two, if the Angels would be willing to spend some money to to say goodbye to him. And, and look, it's a very uncomfortable situation to have because, again, as you said, you're talking about the best player in baseball over the past 10 years. But uh, that that stadium is sold out almost every night. People go to those games. This is where he's from. I know they have center fielders there. I, I think it'd be fair to say that that he would play with them <laughs> and be just fine. So that would be a, a phenomenal homecoming story if it ends up happening. The other team that I would look at potentially would be like the Cubs maybe making a push. But, Donnie, look, the reality is, is that it's got to be a team that's willing to push to a $200 million payroll. Like, th- this is not going to yeah. be one yeah. of those mid-level payroll teams, even with uh, uh, the Angels eating some money. I, I don't see that happening. At this at this point, despite how good of a player Mike Trout is, Mish is right. There's not going to be a lot of teams lining up to take on all that money for a player that gets hurt all the time. Exactly. Right, let's just call it off what it is. He gets hurt a lot, and he makes a ton of money, and he's paid through to, to 2030. And uh, baseball's not the NFL. You can't just say, sorry, we changed our mind. You're cut. <laughs> We're not paying you anymore. Right? Baseball, you got to pay the dude. Um, so... Tomorrow night, we'll get Cam's. Cam's got a live uh, pick for us. Uh, but tomorrow night, you got the Bucks and the Pacers. Pacers are laying eight. Totals 213 and a half there. I think we're going to get there. I think there's going to be points. The Pacers are going to be energetic tomorrow night. And uh, they'll put points up on the board. I think the game goes over. I think the Philadelphia 76ers are going to find a way to extend the series to seven games. As far as the NHL is concerned, I might live to regret this. Give me the Toronto Maple Leafs, Cam. What do you have for the live tour. I might live to regret the leaves too, but you know I'm there. Cam Smith, Gabe, 15 to 1. I know a lot of our golf guys like him this I like week. That pick. I love Abraham. Thank you very much. I didn't get 20 to 1 like the other guys. I got 15. I got Abraham Answer at 25. Mito Pereira is playing great golf at 50 to 1. That's a value play. And a little HV3, Gabe. Harold Varner the third at 85 to 1. Sergio Garcia is a master of this course. He finished second last year in a, losing in a playoff. Top 10 for Sergio and Paul Casey. I know Brady Cannon likes Casey to win at 38 to 1. I'll take him for a top 10, buddy. Let's do it. Babano, I'm looking quickly at the UFL here right now, and it's shocking, isn't it, how bad the Arlington Renegades are? Like, they they, they can't win. Like they, they won the championship last year. You keep waiting for them to flick the switch. I don't think that happens. Michigan, Michigan look good, actually. Michigan has started to put it together. I see Michigan are laying four against uh, Arlington, and um, the Birmingham Stallions are just a beast. They had one yeah. game where they, they barely won, but then they went back to their, we're going to punch you in the mouth and kill you ways. They're laying 11 and a half to the showboats. Total 43. Find up a battle tomorrow on the ice guys, breaking down all the hockey uh, and uh, more. Uh, me and Cam will be back uh, tomorrow night, Thursday night front. I remember only a two-hour show tomorrow night. So for those of you on our AM radio affiliates, catch us on Sirius XM Channel 159. Other than that, you're on your own. Later. <laughs>